in the video you're about to watch between myself and Sam, who goes by I Am Reselling on Instagram, chat about how he finds video games at Walmart, also some difficulties we run into as resellers, and ways to mitigate those. We also talked about the everyday reseller life and got bombarded by questions. If you have any questions that you want to add, please comment down below, and don't forget to like this video. Basically right below your ribcage, all the way to your head almost. Okay, on my screen, I can yeah, see yeah, like so I can... above my ceiling fan and my pants. Whatever. Really? Yeah. Uh, I mind. I mind. Is it basically like nipple line, for lack of a better word, to like six inches yeah. above head? Okay. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. I couldn't think of another point of reference. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. What's up, man? Uh, just outside. I'm glad this is working because again, if the audio or the video gets off, they obviously holler. Uh, same thing yeah. with the guys, uh, good all, go all, the rooster hustle. Same thing, guys. If you have um, any issues or anything, just holler. Yeah. Dang, man. We got quite a bit of people. Yeah, there's quite a bit in there already. Sweet. Aladdin. Yeah, was some book picker. Yeah, the real Jasmine. He said he was tuning in. Nice. Dude, he's he's got some crazy <laughs> numbers. Have you seen his numbers? He's crazy. Yeah. And he's like always on vacation. Why? How does that work? He's, he's got the systems, is what I think. I think. <laughs> or the employees. Probably. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you do that, the real Jasmine? How do you uh, go on vacation so much and still do like over 100K? Yeah. That's nice. His, uh, I was glad he posted like his suspected IP claims, though, because, man, that shit was making me nervous. And then I saw his, and I was like, all right. Even though I'm a tenth of his revenue, or whatever it was, uh, that didn't make me feel so bad. Right. I didn't see that. Oh. Yeah, it's on his uh, profile. If you click, I think, his second-to-last Amazon chart, and you flip, swipe left, you'll see it there. Yeah, it's third. It's good uh, trade. Oh, he says uh, the vacation was two weeks only. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe it, dude. You have, like, 50 photos. <laughs> Almost every day. <laughs> But Sam, you're hideous. Nice. <laughs> Trey called me hideous. You got any? Oh, yeah. How do you know Trey? I was going to ask you that. How do you know Trey? Oh, that's my, dude, that's my, like, childhood best friend. We grew up skateboarding together for a long time. And, uh, yeah, just, we've been friends since we were super young. So I, I started selling used books and stuff on Amazon. And then he, he joined me. And we just started doing like completely like like only retail arbitrage. Dang, dude, you went all through South America. Oh, just that's cool though that you were here. able to like. Yeah, I can hear you all right. I was cutting out there a second, whoop, but now I'm think I'm good again. Um, yeah, what's uh, hi, mommy hasn't showered, John Hort. So that's pretty cool though that you actually were able to like have a friend from high school that actually thought it was interesting and actually uh, went ahead and did it with you then. Yeah, like middle school. We knew each other when I think I was in like seventh or eighth grade. And we sang out a whole, whole lot. Long time. So we just, yeah, we just been like best friends since ever, ever, ever since we were kids. Yeah. Did you, uh, so you originally grew up in Kentucky then? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I grew up in Louisville. And then, um, yeah, I moved up to Milwaukee like four years ago. Or I moved to Wisconsin four years ago. And then I'm about to move back down to Kentucky again. That's not, actually these boxes. These boxes are like stuff I'm shipping, but I got other boxes behind me you can't see. But that's all like my house is like halfway packed up right now. Oh, yeah. So you're getting super close to moving now. Yeah, man. You got to come up here. Like, yeah, dude. Like you said, go to the casino. <laughs> yeah. Well, FBA news. I know he's around somewhere because I saw him on the story or something as a viewer, and then I didn't see him the next day, so I missed it, but yeah, I don't know. He must have a lot of things going on. I think he's married. So, uh, I, like, yeah. you know, I FBA take him on your... It's two dudes, though, right? Isn't it two dudes? I, I think so, yeah. I think so. Yeah. But I, like, yeah. I take him in your post, and then right. I sent him a DM, and I was like, come on, man, like, because you, you and me and him can all belly up to the craft table and throw some dice. I know. I think he's mad I'm taking all of his retail arbitrage uh, sourcing. 
don't know. Uh, could be. He, he seems like a cool dude, both of them. But yeah, yeah. I'm down. Any, anytime, I'm down. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you're here until the very end of the month, though, right? Yeah, I'm going to be here. I might until even the be very here end. a little bit, like barely into September. But we got a little bit of time. We'll figure it out. Good, when, is, when is the next trip planned for retail arbitrage? We're about to, I think we're about to buy a van, actually. We're about to buy a van, and then we're, uh, it'll probably be in a month. I'd say, like, right when I move back down to Louisville, uh, we're going to go for a month. There's or, plenty of spots down there? We're going to go for, like, a week or something. Uh, Louisville's cool because it's, like, you got Indianapolis up top. You got, like, St. Louis over here. Uh, Chicago's just north of Indianapolis for like, you know, two or, or like three hours north or four hours. And then you can go south and, you know, hit like tons of different spots. You're in the center of a lot of stuff. But the actual city of Louisville, it's not as good as Milwaukee. I don't think. You think about Amazon, Amazon FedEx. I've, I've yeah, always used UPS no, guys. So, like, I don't, so like, don't want to grind any yeah. of your salt in your eyes. But I, yeah, I always use UPS. Yeah. Uh, their rates were always cheaper just because I got them right here, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what everybody was talking about with like the UPS always being more expensive because I don't know. I I've used UPS and it's like usually maybe the same prices basically, and since I just like UPS more in general. Dude, the crazy part for so, me is if I drive, if I jump in my car and I drive to FedEx right now, it would literally take five minutes. If I drive to the UPS store, it takes. 12 minutes, 15 minutes, but yet the rate was still poor by like, well, as little as a dollar, but as much as I want to say like seven to nine. It was cheaper? Uh, worse, like more, cost more. FedEx or UPS? Yeah, FedEx. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I didn't know everybody was using uh, FedEx. Like when I first started, I just made the decision really quickly. Like after a couple shipments, I was like, yeah, UPS is always cheaper, so... I've been using UPS ever since then. I don't even look at the FedEx rates anymore because I just assumed that they were more expensive. But I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's just a, I mean, whatever. Unless there's really small profits in the shipment that you're shipping, it shouldn't matter if it's a couple bucks cheaper or more expensive, really. Like, it sucks, but, I mean, it's not, it's not the end of the world. I don't really care. And I guess now that you said that, you got a really good point because if I pull, well, I can't pull it up because it's right here, but if I got my Spotify app out or whatever, I know I calculate like 50 cents or a dollar for shipping a pound or something like that. Right. But, you know, it's kind of baked in already when you get like 25 cents a pound all the time. You know? Exactly. Yeah. It's not so bad. Big West says, don't come to Knoxville, please. Uh, I want to say I haven't yet, but I've been, I've been close. We might have stopped there a couple times, but if I came to your city, you'd still be able to find shit. It's not like I got clear everything out, or I'm sure Jake doesn't either. Right, yeah, and, and that store's always restocked. You never know when they're going to. Seriously, exactly. Like, I, I'll go to a Walmart, and it's a bust, and I can go there in two weeks, and it's just gold. You don't know what their pattern is. Just to touch on it real quick. But maybe that's the way we tie uh, FBA noobs into all this. We'll tell them that, hey, Dan's leaving at the end of the month, man. we got to get out yeah. there. Like, your it's a celebration. Free. Yeah, it's a celebration. It's not like going away. Celebration. Yeah, I'm going to miss it, man. Milwaukee is an awesome city to source. And I've found my, and I've found my like, little honey holes. So I'm going to have to redo the whole thing in uh, Kentucky. But thankfully, Trey's already down there, and we know, we know the spots. There are a couple spots in Kentucky that are just amazing. Something you'd never find in the Midwest. Oh, nice. I know there's stores like, I can't think if it's called Autos or something like that, but there's like these really crazy dirt sheet, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Down there, I know. Or, or at least in yeah. Texas there is. I shouldn't think about <clears> Yeah. That's, that stuff's crazy. Like those, those stores that just buy out truckloads of shit or whatever. Like, yeah, you can go in there and spend fucking crazy money if you really want to. Closed out deals, all that shit. Yeah. What's up, Arbitrage Hustle? The real jazz in the city was all through South America. Okay. I didn't know that was That's sick. That's super sick. I'd love to go out there. That'd be a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like, I've only been to like Cancun, and 
that was when I was like six. Other than that, I've never left the country. Okay. Yeah, I only left until our honeymoon, and then we went to Jamaica. But otherwise, I never left the country either. Uh, John uh, North, the book said, uh, do you think it has implications for UPS in the future, Amazon moving forward? I, don't, I mean, yes. I don't know what they are, but I'm sure there's something. They're working out some sort of deal. Uh, it definitely makes them more valuable to Amazon, I think. UPS. Yeah, I, mean, I think, yeah, exactly. And just as a company in general, that's probably the best thing, the best news that they can hear is that Amazon's going to stop using FedEx. So I wouldn't be surprised if Amazon just outright buys UPS or they team up in some way if they haven't already like completely merged somehow. Kind of fulfillment network. Yeah, or, Amazon. Or, or maybe FedEx is just the first to get cut and UPS is next once Amazon can handle it all. That'd be crazy. Uh, that could be it, too. <laughs> yeah. The side hustle chica, she said that hers is the same in Florida. UPS is cheaper. Yeah. Uh, ah, arbitrage hustle. Have, uh, have any employees ever denied you the three-cent deal? Yeah. Yeah, all the time. They're pissed. <laughs> they're oh, yeah. mad. Not bad. As soon as I leave, they fucking buy it themselves. They're they're scummy. They act like it's their three cent game that you're buying from. It's not. It's the stores. Just let me have it. And go about your day. They deny yep. me all the time. See, I haven't got the denies, but I had a guy that was like, "Are you sure this is right? I should take this to my manager." And I'm like, "Nah, I'm pretty sure it's right." And then it's like. Okay, I scanned it, so I got lucky. <laughs> yeah, I I fight it every time. Like if they're gonna argue with me about it, I'll, I'll keep I'll I'll argue with them until they bring like the second manager over to tell me no. <laughs> and dude, I I've, I've had worse things happen. But uh, first, but on the subject of just the three cent games getting denied, I tell them like it's in your all's policy. Like I scanned it on my phone. And it showed up three cents on my phone. So actually, Walmart just quoted me for three cents. So you're basically committing like false advertisement by advertising it for three cents on my phone. And then when I get to the register, you're denying me it. So that's like false advertisement. And I try and work that angle of like you're breaking your own policy by not giving it to me. And that is like 50 50 up in the air. That's, that's pretty smart. That's smart. It's kind of like saying that something is a safety concern. You know, it gives right, another yeah, way like, to get in. It's it's like me scanning it on my phone. It might as well be on the shelf for three cents. There's a price tag basically on my phone telling me with that barcode it's three cents in your store. Like that acts almost directly as a price tag in my opinion. Or that's how I make it sound to them, which is true in my in my judgment. If I was a manager, I would let it go. <laughs> but of course I would. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a stack. I had a stack of video games, like seven dollar video games, three dollar video games, one dollar video games. I was even paying like for like full price video games, just super rare full price video games that were going for like sixty or seventy on Amazon. <clears throat> and when I got to the register, uh, a couple games rang up for the three cents. So that made the cashier get the manager, and then the manager was like, "Okay, called the other big big." You know, like Top Dog, and he said, "Don't let him buy anything." So the three cent games ruined the rest of the other games for me. They, I had a cart full of video games, and I had to just walk out the store empty handed. And it was because of three, the three cent deal. Yeah. Dude, Trip. usually they'll say like, "I'll let you buy this this one time, and then don't come in here again." Or you know, wow, they cut me off. Yeah, wow. I mean, it's not. I've been blacklisted at places too. I mean, I shared a GameStop one, and you know. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, great GameStop. I've, I've never said it until uh, over something like this. I, I maybe said it on the YouTube, but anyways, uh, shoe carnival, the local shoe carnival. I can't go in there. <laughs> what? Yeah, I can't go in there anymore, man. So they they <laughs> shut me off in August of last year, I think it was. Wow. I was finding regular shoes that are just replants. You know, so I can oh, just so keep buying them, buying them, buying them. Yeah. <laughs> and so what had happened, how do you know, uh, is it? I was just going to say, like, you, 
you need to share share those shoes with me. I'll, I'll yep. pay you for that. I'm gonna yeah, we can talk. What's around me though? Oh, okay. I'd say yeah, we can talk, man. But like, yeah. I was just trying to make yourself look like a regular customer because my deal was the uh, manager, store manager, was there that day that I was gonna grab some more, and he's like, "Oh, do you did you buy shoes here last week or whatever?" And I'm I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I did." And he said, uh, "Do you have a business?" And then I'm like, "Damn." Uh, yeah, I do. I sell shoes, you know, with my brother or whatever. And then he's like, oh, is this for profit? And then I'm just like, no, I'm done, dude. And yeah, I said, yeah, but, you know, we donate some of the customer returns and um, and whatever, you know. And then he's like, oh, but yeah, my corporate called me because they saw that I had, you know, an $1,800 order last week or whatever, for the last couple weeks or whatever. And he's like, yeah, man, you can't can't come in here anymore i'm like what and he's like well you know you go this long spiel about you could become a non-profit and have an employee appreciation day and all these hoops and i'm just like man is it worth it <laughs> all right well <clears throat> i don't give a shit man I, in this business you gotta you gotta lie sometimes i just feel like no i'm buying this for fucking homeless people or some shit <laughs> Uh, I, just, I just don't know how long I'd be able to go with it, though, Sam. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. Eighteen hundred dollars a week for you know ten weeks or whatever, whatever it looks like. Maybe That's it's crazy. not eighteen hundred dollars a week. Maybe it's you know three thousand a month. It's still like yeah. ah, I don't know. Cause I'll get that at Kohl's yeah. now. I'll get that at Kohl's, but they're totally cool with it because it's clearance. So they don't right. they don't get that far down the base. They just want to know like, oh, do you sell these? You know, and and so. Yes, and then I always mention immediately after that that the customer returns, the ones we can't sell, about like 3% of the merchandise does go to like, uh, you know, donations or women homeless shelters and right. stuff. And that is actually cool. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. So. How, about, how about the Kohl's cash? Has anybody ever had a problem with you spending like $800 worth of Kohl's cash at their store? Like, do you uh, ever get weird looks or anything like that? Because I've gotten turned down at a couple of stores. Um, use it. I mean, if it's like, it feels like the magic number is 250. If I, oh, nah, maybe 180, 180. If I spent under 180 in cold cash at a single visit, I'm good. But if it's like above really? that, I'll sometimes hear like, oh, can somebody check the authenticity of this? Or I want to get my manager right. to check the authenticity. Because all that is is like, you know, a sheet of paper. I don't have one with me. A sheet of paper and they're printing numbers on it. I mean, yeah. there's got to be a formula. Not that I'm, you know, great at a black hat. Yeah, but so yeah. It's, I have, I have. But you've actually got to turn up tonight. Yeah, not only that, I can't really oh. tell the difference. Oh, but no, um, either really way, again. like, all right, yeah. Oh, I can hear you again. You're good. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So. Uh, you know, if you spend like fifty dollars and you get ten dollars Kohl's cash, but if you spend twenty five dollars and twenty five, you can take the two receipts in and get your Kohl's cash. Mm -hmm. We tried doing that with like thirty receipts, and they denied us to do it. So, whatever. Dang. Yeah, that's that sucks. But I guess that's uh, like maybe something that you guys want to do. Anybody who's listening to this. Which actually there's quite a few people in here. Um, yeah, I would just I would just break it up. I would break it up. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. We gotta catch some chat up now. I know, but either way, I want to bring up the Knoxville with Big West being from Knoxville. Uh, Trey just on the chat, he said, uh, and I remember this too. Trey, he I think I forgot. I think he was at a Coles, and Coles called the cops on him after he left, thinking he had, he was doing credit card fraud or something crazy. The the fucking the police pulled him over, like they like yanked him out of the car and like pushed him up against the van and were like trying to like figure out what he was doing wrong exactly and shit. And, like there was nothing wrong. He was just I sell on Amazon and then they tried being cool with him and shit. But yeah, they like they like did the whole fucking rundown with him. Threw him up against the car, put him in handcuffs, like had him sitting on the curb and shit. Wow, there's got to be like some kind of thing you could get some restitution on for that. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fucked. It's crazy yeah. how they can like, you know, basically have you in custody and then start the process. Yep. Exactly. Sucks. 
Uh, do you sell new or used video games? Who, me? Uh, pretty much 99%. 99% <laughs> new. Like, I'll, I'll sell some used sometimes. Like, something like this. Like, I got this in the store, and then now it's like, you know, so I'm selling this used now. There you go. There's a free one for y'all. But yeah. Hey, what is the name like of that guy? I, I got it. <laughs> Medal of Honor. Medal of Honor, guys. It's like, a, it's like an $8 game on Amazon. I'm not spilling the beans about anything amazing. Oh, but yeah. So stuff like that, I'll, I'll sell that as uh, used. Uh, nice. Or if just like the plastic's completely ripped off or something. Oh, sure. And that does happen. I know that for sure. Because that's happened to some of them that I bought last time. Which, by the way, man, I was so excited to find that bin. It was like finding a beach when you're in the no. desert. Oh my yeah. god! Well, yeah, hell yeah, it was. But it's just like I've never seen them before. I've never seen them really? before. It's just like, ah, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Sometimes it's amazing, and other times it's just all the value video games that are worthless. So you dig through the whole pin, and then you get like three games, maybe. But I'm glad that your your bin was successful. Yeah, it's probably like 18. Well, no more than that. About 36 deep, uh, 48 or something. Let's see. How many stores do you go in a day? How much do you spend? Every day varies because if I'm at a if I'm at a really nice Walmart that I'm getting a lot of shit at, I can spend two hours in a Walmart. But just an average day, I say average. I, if I'm not traveling super far, just in my city, I'm gonna try and hit like at least like eight, maybe fourteen if I can. Spending it just wow. depends. Wow. Right. You know, it, just how your day's going. But on average, I, I usually spend maybe anywhere from like fifteen hundred bucks to twenty five. Right. Yeah, I'd say like when I go to do like loops of Kohl's or um, like Barnes and Noble, Target rarely, just because it's national. Fuck Target. It, it tanks. It's just tanks, terrible, man. I'm <laughs> done with retail arbitrage at Target. I'm done with it. it. And unless it's super close to Q4, me too. Me too. I would rather go to Walmart and get their toys before Target toys. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's trash. Dude, that's so it's funny that you agree with that. It all comes from home office, so everybody's getting, if it was at $12 and now it's at 6 in California, it's $6 right now. It's the exact same everywhere. The only way that it changes is if they say it's an online item or an open box item. If it just has the normal yellow clearance sticker, like it's a 99% chance that that is the same price everywhere. So, <laughs> and I've I'm seen the kidding. online item thing on electronics. So you're, yeah, you keep away. Uh, any, like anything. If it, if it just says that it was like an online return or whatever, like something like that. Yeah, but uh, I would say if it's like hour long stores though, then I try to do three in like six hours with driving. So actually it's three yeah. hours. So uh, one an hour, wow, that was, why did it take me so long to touch that? <laughs> that was ridiculous, yeah. I try to go there for an hour and I do three. Jesus, yeah. I need to wake up today, but anyway. Um, usually though, I'm not quite like you, man, because you're saying like, you'll hit eight in eight hours then, or are you thinking, well, you said it depends. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, if it's a full day, like full day of sourcing, I wake up early, I'll start at seven, and I'll get back at 10 o'clock. So I mean, I'm doing like, Crazy, crazy hours. Uh, I'm young. I can. Yeah, yeah, dude, you got it in at the right time. Uh, Trey added that uh, he had to stand in the rain, and they looked at all his credit cards and searched all in the rain. Yeah. All the Stupid. I think it was because he also had like a, a one of the cards that they give you at the bank that just says preferred customer on it instead of like his name. That might have also been a part of it that they were like super weirded out. <laughs> Uh, the real Jasmine says you guys thought I had employees. Damn, man, if you ain't got employees, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Like, honestly, you got a team or something. You, you're just by yourself. That's insane. Uh, he was saying that he's uh, Amazon's doing their own thing. They branched out of five cities, uh, Big West, about the uh, UPS thing. Oh, you might have mentioned that, actually. Um, and then that, Trey added that he uh, thinks Amazon's also doing their own thing with the shipping. It's the smartest move, in my opinion. 
Um, Sue, uh, Free Moutre. Yeah, I mean, as long as I got Sam's permission to put them on YouTube, then it'll go up. Uh, is that all right with you? Yeah, for sure. Okay. What else we got? Antonio, what's up? Daddy Hustler, how's it going? Okay, now I'm finally caught up to the part you're at. All right. Okay. Very yeah. good. Yep. Self checkout. That's the dream. That's the shit. But when you got like 80 video games and they have to take them all out of that little plastic, they just want you to go over to a register, which kind of sucks. And it makes sense because I mean I'm sure they've had people that have broken like the coupon the coupon code excuse me at Walmart and might have some sketchy coupons. Right. Yeah. Um, also, speaking of Target, the only thing good about Target is every now and again they come out with a deal where they end up losing money and they don't realize it. So you can go hit you can go hit twenty targets as quickly as possible and get yourself some free shit. But usually it's nothing that valuable. Like silly flash sales where they reprice them wrong, yeah. like that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. man. I don't know if you everybody everybody should go follow uh, the North Philly Coupon King. If anybody doesn't follow him already, you should go follow. He'll post some deals with like crazy coupon glitches. Yeah, okay. So the no North, you say is what the what North? Uh, the North Philly, like Philadelphia, North Philly Coupon King. I'm pretty sure that's his uh, name. Uh, awesome. And, yeah, he has. He posts like you know. You kind of gotta follow. Like he posts his normal day to day stuff, but like. Every now and again, he's worth following just for like maybe once every like four or five months he posts something and I'm just like running to the store to go get. Like there was, there's this one deal that didn't work out for me because the computers turned it off before it actually happened or before I could actually make it happen. But it was buy two 99 cent or 97 cent, uh, it's like cat food cans. You buy two of those, get a $5 gift card. So you spend two dollars, you get a five dollar gift card, or you spend like a dollar eighty, you get a five dollar gift card. And then if you just take that gift card and buy the next two kids <laughs> with that gift card, you just start getting free money from Target. I'll send you. I'll send you the photo. <laughs> I said it. It actually said what? You could just go through shit. Yes, it said it said that like exactly like I I botched it, but literally like you he was just like in targets like printing money from gift cards. It's crazy. Oh, wow, you really you really are printing money at that point. Holy shit! Right, idiots. No, I thought you were talking about like maybe like a buy two get one on video games at uh, Target or some kind of sale like that because I've seen a few opportunities there, but. You know, I don't. Oh yeah, you gotta right. dig. You gotta dig, though. Last last Q four, I learned this one from him too. Was a uh, buy two video games, get a fifty dollar gift card, but then you could price match the video games with Walmart, and Walmart had the video games for twenty four dollars a piece. So you buy two twenty four dollar games, get a fifty dollar gift card, and then you buy the next two games with that gift card, and you just flipped it. I got I had to stack a stack of FIFA nineteens, Madden nineteens, Far Cries, all sorts of shit. Dude, you are a hustler. That, that's hustler. Yeah. It was it was thanks to that dude. I don't know yeah. how I started following him, but I'm glad I did. North Philly Keep On Hustler or something. I'll, I'll definitely call it. North Philly Keep On King. I should I should shout out that story because that man made me probably like a couple thousand dollars in Q4. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, damn. Uh, any tips on getting ungated in RA, specifically video games? Um. Damn. And what about software you use in the store? All right. The easy, all right. I'll start with the uh, restricted. I don't even remember if I was ever completely restricted in video games in general. I started selling books and other things before I even realized that uh, video games were that profitable. So I think I just got auto engaged almost immediately. But I remember I was somewhere around like. I've done like probably forty thousand, forty to fifty thousand dollars in sales at that point, and I didn't have. I had like you know, ninety nine five star reviews, or you know what I'm saying. Like yeah, I was like a ninety nine percent as far as my reviews went, because I had a couple of books that fucked up and people got mad. Uh, 
give them bad reviews. But I had good reviews and around like I want to say like yeah like fifty thousand dollars in sales. Uh, then any, then they oh, and uh, for me it was I was my first sale. I actually looked it up was uh, Nike or excuse me, uh, Nintendo Pokemon Gold for Game Boy. Wow. I must have been ungated right away. Right away, I must when, have been. How long ago was that? Oh, it was uh, March of 2017, or February, late February of 2017. So I actually found the sheet. Like, I have the evidence. I'm going to post it here some throwback Thursday for sure. Uh, the second part of this question, though, is are you using any Word. software yeah. for the stores? <clears throat> yeah, I use uh, Scoutify comes with it. Inventory Lab. That's, I would say, probably the best scanner I've used so far, but it's only the second scanner I've ever used. But it costs money, so I forget how much it is a month, but, yeah, it's not free. What about you? Yeah, same here. It's got to buy two, and uh, it's $40 a month. But for, you just keep uh, it, too, well, right? You, you know, I actually quit the I, – I subscribed to it for about two months, and the FBA multi-tool – it's a little bit of cash, though. I think no, it costs me like sixty nine for a month, but all, all it's for eight users, though. Uh, okay. Maybe it's forty seven. Maybe it's like fifty two. Whatever. Uh, anyways, though, it has its uh, its own Keepa integrated. So when Keepa made that change, I had to get Keepa because I had nothing. And then within about two months, three right. months, they came out with their own Keepa. So mobily, it doesn't do me any good, you know, on mobile, but. For the team and when I'm sourcing on a computer, then I can see the the keep up. Yeah, and you can double you can double check if you got something that you think might be a risk or something. Right. right. For if Amazon if Amazon's selling it and stuff. Yeah, and I'll just end up returning it to the store pretty much. But otherwise, Goutify, you know, covers the basis for me without keep up. Oh yeah. Word. Uh, how sure. high are your long term storage fees? Not that high. I don't have very many things that have been in there for a long time. I didn't look up mine. I'm not totally sure. Um, if I had a ballpark, it maybe sixty dollars, or does that sound ridiculous? Maybe forty, no. somewhere in that no. range of money. Yeah, um, it's it's not much for me. I know that because we try and turn our stuff pretty quickly. We have a couple items that are just slow, but yeah. Yeah, that's we'll why I started. I mean, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, I haven't been doing video games for that long, so I'm sure I have some video games for, like, older systems that might sit there for a year, but I don't have too many right now. Yeah, for me, the slowest selling stuff is the shoes. That's why I was trying to, like, change the ratio of shoes to other stuff, so it turns a little quicker. Yeah, shoes are, shoes are slow for me, and I'm starting to feel the tank on shoes, too, especially with Nike's. It's just they've been doing so many 30% off, so you don't get an edge. You know, you can't get an edge is what it was for me. Yep, and then Marshalls, it's like they're getting the same stuff in every store too. So it's it's getting a little bit harder, I think, for shoes. And shoes were slow to begin with, and competition's only growing. I mean, yeah, the mark, like, you know, the demand is also growing, but I, I feel like the supply and the demand are like neck and neck almost. So... It's it. I think it's only going to be harder to become a shoe, Amazon sell or Amazon shoe seller, whatever you want to say. For sure. Hi, KT reselling. Hey, Romer, what's up? <clears throat> it's hey, good, Romer. What is Cole's cash for Hoopy? It's uh, you get ten dollars of it for every fifty dollars you spend, and so it's just a reward that you could spend on anything. Yeah. Uh, arbitrage, arbitrage, hustle. <clears throat> Are you able to do in-store pickup? Uh, today deals. Three years ago, I was killing it with dollar pickup. Today deals. I've never even heard of it, to be honest with you. A dollar? What do you mean, one dollar pickup? Today deals? I don't know what that is, to be honest. Uh, you? A, are you able to do in-store pickup today deals? Three years ago, I was killing it. With. Oh, uh, you know how some? Uh, is that? I think what he, uh, he or she is talking about is. When you go to Target and you, you know how they got those parking spots now about, uh, yeah. maybe that's the word, in-store pickup maybe. Um, I think he might be talking, he or she might be talking about that. I yeah. haven't tried it, but I've heard that other people haven't 
obsessed with herself. I'm, yeah, I don't know. That'd be nice to just 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 go to the store and have them bring this stuff to you. But yeah, I've never tried it. Never done it. Sounds cool. Uh, Gorilla Grip says, "Tell your boy to contact his attorney." <laughs> That's a fucking lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, we should have. But it was, you know, it whatever. Water under the bridge. We're we're getting enough money just by sourcing. It was worth our time to just keep it rolling. We probably got we could probably fucking sue Coles to be honest. If we really wanted to. We've had some shit stuff happen to us. I've almost gotten tackled by uh, Coles loss prevention, for mm. sure. Yeah, that they can't do. No, no loss prevention people can can actually like keep yeah. you from leaving the store physically or like that way. Right, exactly. But I mean, I didn't. But I fucking I I thought I was about to. They weren't they weren't playing around. But I mean, I'm sure they do though. I guess because I know when I went to Ross's last time, they were talking about how some lady gave her kid cookies and he smeared his throat. The outside was all over the floor like a couple nights back. And then anyways, there was another person stealing, and he walked right in the store, grabbed the cologne, and then walked right out. And the lady said, the only thing you can really do is just stand in between them, but you actually can't physically hold them. You have to get a police officer or something. Or you could lock the doors or something That's like crazy. that. Maybe not lock the doors, but put something in front of the doors. Uh, Daddy Hustler, yeah. do you just scan all the games with the Walmart app? Uh, not all the games, but a majority of them that... There's like a few, like there's always going to be the obvious ones that aren't worth scanning, but like, yeah, pretty much anything else a little bit older, anything like older than six months or a year old, don't scan new releases. It's a waste of time, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I, I scan everything with the Walmart out app unless there's a, like a wall scanner right next to me, but usually it's the Walmart app. And I just got the Walmart app so that I didn't have to go to the scanner and hear the beep. That's super loud. Yeah, have you ever noticed how weird those things? I don't know how the speakers are set up on it. It's like death when you're right in front of it. But like, if you just do this and you scan it like to the side, like instead of just doing it like this, like if you just scan it like that, it's like 30 decibels lower. It's like kind of quiet in a weird way. So it's like it just wants to annoy the person directly in front of it. I don't know. Do it next time you scan it. Next time you scan a, something on the Walmart wall scanner, do it once right in front of you, and then just do it right here. And it's like crazy difference. I don't know how they have it set up. It's like maybe I'm just going crazy. I've been to too many Walmarts. I mean, they're they're loud though. Don't get me wrong. I'll try it. I'll try it. They got some. Con- I have like conspiracy theories about Walmart. They're fucking. They're up, they're up to something. I don't know. I mean, that. well, they are kind of sketchy. I mean, remember when they got in trouble for all those um, life insurance claims they had on their own employees? No. It was like I four, was that like 10 years ago? or Yeah, they did something sketchy. Like every person they hired, they buy a life insurance policy when they hired them, too, on that person. There's something to that effect. It's sketchy. Yeah. Like, that's why weird. would you insure your employees? I mean, it just seems like you're going to kill them then. I yeah. don't know. They're like releasing. <laughs> shit into the air in Walmarts that they know is toxic but makes people buy more shit or something. I don't know. Crazy, man. There's a lot of conspiracy theories out there about like all sorts of shit. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I just saw the the real Jasmine. This I read this earlier actually. He said you guys thought I had employees. I do. I still think you do. I don't believe I don't believe that you don't. <laughs> Either that or you got a prep and pack that um, is another LLC and their employees are in that business, I guess. Something, I, yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to scroll to the bottom and see what he's been saying about it more, but I'm just going to stay stay on track here. Uh, I don't know you what you're doing. Are you doing private label too or something? Or wholesale? I don't know. He's, there's something there. Yeah, I think he's, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's more than Nikes though, for sure. Uh, Gold yep. Paul said, uh, if you had $1,000 to spend, oh. what inventory would you buy? Or, oh, Gool. Um, If I had, well, it depends. Am I being loaned or is it my $1,000? Am I trying to get the most out of my money and never do it again? Or am I trying to turn that money around as quick as possible? So if it was the me trying to turn it around quick as possible 
I probably wouldn't do video games, to be honest with you. I'd try and do maybe like grocery or something along those lines just to get the money back quickly. If I was trying to get the most money out of it, but sit on it for a while, it would be books. And then video games is the happy medium, I'd say. Yeah, it kind of depends what you're going to use it for, like you were saying. I would agree with that. Uh, where do we find all your books? Uh, mainly, for me, it was library sales or that big one I went down there that was like a YMCA sale. Uh, recently, though, it's in the St. Vincent in uh, Wisconsin, of course. I like crossing the border. I don't know. What about, you get any books, Sam, anymore or any different sources you want to add? When I, when I did do books, it was... Um... It was Goodwills and, yeah, St. Vincent of Paul, library sales. And I would like, I'd try and pick up textbooks from people off Facebook Marketplace. First of all, in RA, any tips to avoid price tanking or finding good stuff to send in? Oh, okay, wait, let me catch up to that quick, real quick. This one? Um, say okay. it again? Uh, side hustle experiment. Uh, um, no, I have no idea. I'm, I'm lost. I'm interested in diversifying an RA. Any tips to avoid price tanking or finding good stuff to send in? Uh, okay. That's hard. It's really hard to judge if a price tank because you really have no idea what's going to happen with it. <clears throat> um, buy wide. Don't buy deep. That's a pretty good I, you know, that's what I would do. If you're worried about price tanking, just like don't don't go all in on one product. Get five of a product if there's 20 on the shelf. Come back in a week, and if they're still there, get the rest if they do good or whatever. But just give things time. Um, I know people buy things and hold them off until next Q4. Do that if you want. But if you're just, I mean, yeah, it's hard. There's no way to really avoid price tanking. Everybody, everybody deals with it, right? Right, because sometimes it's just somebody that wants to just exit out of that product because they've had it for you know far too long or whatever it might be. So I've seen that. It's not always somebody wants to just sell it right away. Sometimes it's that. Exactly. Um, so I got a question for you, though, Jake. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. So I have a kid, right? You're married? Yeah, married with two children, yeah. Okay, cool. So... Your numbers are like, we always talk and our numbers are like always super close pretty for the most part, you know, like we're usually doing almost the same numbers a month. How, <clears throat> me and Trey, you're, you know, catching up with us or you're beating us months and you're doing it by yourself. Like how exactly are you able to do that? It's really just me and I'm married and I have two children. Yep. And I guess I think the biggest help is just the online arbitrage stuff. So the, the eight virtual assistants that go to Target.com, you know, go to Walmart, go to Best Buy, go to products, sell at a profit on Amazon. And then ones that review those products to make sure they're good. And then another one that purchases on my behalf from the stores wow. themselves. That's yeah. crazy. You have, you have eight other VAs? Is that what you said? Yeah, yep, yep. Eight, eight. There's five that five that do the manual sourcing. Yes. One reviews, one shipments and receipts, and then one purchasing. So I hope that adds up to eight. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So That's then anyways. Insane, yeah, so they send all that stuff to the prep and pack. A prep and pack is uh I'll go inside because it looks like we're losing this. Um the prep and pack, yeah, they'll actually get the product or whatever and actually send it in. Than to uh, to Amazon for me. Hi, Isabel. Sorry, I just saw that. Oh, yeah. um, uh, okay. I'll just come back to this spot, the classic spot. Um. Yeah. So, anyways, that's what I'm there. That's crazy, man. So you got a little time. You got a big operation just behind the scenes that you're not even really watching happen how many hours are your VAs putting in a week they usually just get paid by the task so like the uh, sources will be 150 every two weeks and then the reviewer gets a little bit more 
the um, shipments and receipts girl the person gets uh, paid per receipt or shipment so I don't know the hours but um, it's just task based you know like yeah, this is how this works this is how this works so I would guess that some days you know it might be uh, 40 hour weeks for them and some days they're maybe doing better and it's only like 35 or you know 32 really how much are you paying them like to do all this like in, in total in total is uh, just around three thousand every every month wow that's so, not I mean, bad. a lot of cash you know that's not bad though really Considering what it brings in, you know, because you got yeah. the arbitrage that you see on IG and you see, right. here, but then yeah, there's all that going on. So what do you think the ratio is between your online versus your RA? Like, do you think you're doing the most of your numbers with RA? I do, I do, but I don't know how close the margin is anymore. Because what we've been doing these last five to seven weeks is we just keep upping the purchasing amounts. Really? Like I want to be probably 5,000 a week or whatever, like within the next month. So it's kind of crazy though, when you put it in perspective, cause you're like, typically when you buy something, you're going to sell it for double, let's just say, or that's the gross. Yes. So that's why I still think the RA part's bigger, but that's, you know, it might, crazy, it might change here soon. Right. That's insane, man. So like, how'd you go about finding these VAs? I, I just go to two uh, Facebook. Well, originally I went to Upwork, or uh, the other one is. Um, well, I don't know what the other one is. Just Upwork, and I found some there, but it was still hit or miss. But what I what I found is I found two Facebook groups, so I can you know I can post right. them here later on or something. But I found two Facebook groups, and so all they do I post an ad of what I'm doing, and then I basically say like, um, you know, I want to create a test for you guys, and I'll run. A paid test with seven of them. Really? And then that usually gives me one. So I that's so I use the two Facebook groups. So I'm sorry, but I might not have heard you correctly. But so these people are from the U.S. or no? Oh, they're from the Philippines. Sorry. Sick. That's dope. So that's probably they're probably getting paid like crazy. Like that's like good ass money. Yeah, I mean, when I see their pesos or whatever, it's like 16,000 Filipino pesos sometimes. Otherwise, yeah. it's more like 4,000 or whatever pesos. And I'm like, damn, I wonder how much stuff you can buy with that. Yeah, that's really? true. Sorry, my, my phone's about to die. I got to plug my charger. Oh, no problem. Uh, welcome, Daniel. Welcome, Merch. I just want to see what other questions there are before we answer some of our other ones, because I still have a list, too, unfortunately. I know, I man. We're going to get kicked off in about 12 minutes, I think. Uh, yeah. You visit the same, how often do you visit the same store or do you come back a week later? Oops. Uh, you cut out there, Sam. Uh, I, have, I have visited the same store within a week. I, I've gone to stores, done really good, and gone back in the morning and done good again. So it's often the same day, then. And yeah, I mean, almost. Uh, what do you do with the Walmart app says not available? Oh, you cut out there. I'll try and get an employee and put you to a price check it. Okay. Um, and then uh, the real Jasmine said he was 50% wholesale, 50% RA. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's sick, though. It's still great, dude. You're killing it. Heck yeah. Uh... Road to, road to resale, welcome. What's hey. good, Dr. Drew? Okay, money, Drew. Oh, he popped in here too. That boy, Drew. The real uh, Jason Hayes. Oh, yeah, there he is. Dr. Drew, what's up? Yeah. How long are games in the Amazon? <laughs> uh, uh, depends on the rank. Depends on what game. I, I'll buy, you know, an Xbox 360 game, and it will be there for less than a week, and then I'll buy it. PS4 game and it can be there for you know two months. Depends on the competition, the rank, and uh, that's really about it. Competition and the rank is the only thing you have to worry about. So if there's a hundred other sellers, it, it might take a little bit longer than a game that only has ten sellers. But if you know, like I would buy <clears throat> if a if a game is ranked like four thousand in video games and it has four other sellers on it 
but then another game is ranked 2,000, but it has 100 sellers on it. I'd rather get the 4,000 ranked game with the least amount of competition, but it, it all depends. Like, it's crazy. The difference is crazy with video games. You never know how long something's really going to be in there until you send it in and see what happens. But if you, if you get a game that's under 10,000 rank, I mean, you're safe. It's going to go. You can get a game under 20,000 and it's going to go. But under, if you're just starting and you're trying to see your money back pretty quickly, stick, stick with like under 15,000 rank. And I know during Q4, they just sell like crazy regardless, but I mean, it's not Q4 yet, but yeah. you know, like when I started with the video games, it was crazy. It yep. was like nine Super Smash Brothers a day, like yeah. that kind of shit. Right. It's going to be insane again. We got to go super hard this year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go crazy. <laughs> uh, how long have you been doing Amazon FBA? For me, it's January of 2018. January 2018? Yeah, because I only did FBM for the first time. <clears throat> oh, word. So I immediately started doing FBA. I want to say it was October of 2017. I sent in my first books. And then that, I think that next, I don't know, I think Q4 of that year is when I went full RA. Maybe it was longer. You know what? I bet it was actually, it was earlier than September. Or it was earlier than October. It was like, Maybe June, June of 2017 is when I first started, but I wasn't doing it crazy. I was just doing books, and I wasn't spending that much money. So quite a bit. It's been a little bit. Uh, positives and negatives of selling games compared to other products? You want me to? Yeah. Wow, they're covering us in questions right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. You, can, uh, you want me to answer that one? I can answer yeah. it. Sure, yeah, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Pros and cons. That was the question, right? Video games, pros and cons? Yes, sir. Compared to other products. Pros is it's like the lightest thing, pretty much. Like It's super light. Um, you can fit a bunch into a box. They're crazy. That You can find crazy expensive games that look like trash. Um, cons are, I guess, they're kind of hard to source. There's not like a whole, whole lot of places that you can get them. But, yeah, I mean, there's not really many cons to selling video games. I guess maybe sometimes they're not as fast as you want them to be. If you want to start moving into wholesale on video games, it's it's a little bit harder because they just don't sell, like, as quick as somebody might think. Some games do, but the ones you're going to get wholesale prices on and wholesale orders for, they're going to be a little bit slower flips, like... I, you know, I've gotten wholesale games that are around the like 2,000 rank in video games, and I'm I can sell maybe like the maybe like on average maybe three of those games sell a day, maybe. So I mean, 2,000 ranks are really good rank in video games, and there's not a lot of competition on these video games either. But I'm still only selling like three a day. I might be, I might be a little bit off with that, but yeah, they're not crazy fast and then I would say the only other con that I was going to add is uh, you might get a game back that's already played or you know when somebody opens a new game it's already a used game yeah you know, but I, I so when I was doing the GameCube games I would get you know Mario Kart Double Dash back and I couldn't even play it on my Wii and I'm like you crooked like you can't do anything about that you know yeah uh, there. yeah that's actually a good point like that type of shit, and they're also pretty easy to get damaged, you know, like, they're, they're kind of fragile, and an Amazon warehouse isn't a great place for a video game, you know, to stay, they're probably getting thrown around, and, you know, all sorts of shit happening. True. Well, any recommendation for a beginner? I'm on my fifth month, mostly with books. Um, if you have capital, go over to retail arbitrage. And have fun because I think retail arbitrage is a blast. Absolutely, traveling and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, so alternatively, you can start going to websites and see what's up there too. But yeah, it's kind of like the more you send in, the more sales you're going to make. Yeah. If you if you've probably uh, I'm just assuming I don't know how hard you're going with books, but five months into books, you're probably you know hopefully 
you're like right around the 10k mark a month on good months or whatever around that area once you start seeing you know like thirty thousand dollars in sales a month or whatever like to get that with books it's, it's pretty hard so you, it's a little bit less work if you start going into retail arbitrage you're not breaking your back lifting 50 pound boxes Absolutely. yeah i know some of the big guys on ig that you're just doing gaylords 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 do you see like twenty seven thousand a and sales and you're like man those guys are working their butts off but you know that's yeah. the hustle so during this month when it's textbook season they're gonna see you know 70 grand or whatever right that's the flip yes. side Trade so what's money. your average cost per game uh, minimum it's, it's, profit. All, it's all over the place uh minimum profits i'll go as low as a dollar on the profit but that's only if it's a dollar video game or like a three cent video game um i stick with 50 percent roi and my average cost, it's all over the place. I'd say if I had to give it an average, like $12 a video game. And I was going to say for my uh, scout, if I set it to 40%, so I'm slightly lower than you. Yeah. Trey had a good point, though. A con for selling video games, I got a receipt. It's just going and looking for that game on a receipt. Y'all can screen capture all those games if you really want. But trying to find that one specific fucking UPC on a receipt when you have like 300 things it sucks put in like a put in a super nugget at the end of this so here's what I came up with and it's just from seeing your story and everything like that so let's say you go to the store you get all these games in the bins or whatever and they're awesome they're selling is now you I guess you don't even have to tell me this but I'm guessing the process from there is like you're gonna look at the UPC look at the name whatever and you're gonna plug it into um Damn, what's the name of that website? Brick yes, yes. And then it's just going to be one of these deals. Like, right, if you can. But the thing is about video games is that the ones that do really well and are profitable, they're few and far between. And sometimes Am or sometimes Walmart doesn't even know that it has the game. It's so old. It's fallen off their system, and it's called a deleted game, or it's not on file. So even on BrickSeek, you couldn't find it. But I do do that with three cent games this is like a this is a pretty good nugget if you find one three cent game take that upc and take it to brick seek and then you'll find another uh you know hopefully you'll find a couple other of that same game in your area and you'll be able to get you know three cent games all over the place but that that just tells you when they have three cent games that means they're slipping and they have old stock and they don't know what to do with it and you'll probably find more not three cent games, but other deals at that store, or possibly other three cent games. Okay, so it goes two ways then. Not only yeah. will you find.